goal with this close guard is to break this guy's posture, which means I have to bring his head down. For this. On the street, this guy can rain down punches on me from this position, which I don't want, but at least here I can control the distance. So if I can't bring him down to me, I need to go get him. So this week, we're gonna start with bringing him down. So I'm working on, uh, since we've been working on the armbar triangle, we're gonna add the choke to it, okay? Now when I bring someone down, it's all legs and core, knees and core. It's not my hands, I'm not grabbing and pulling. If I grab, I'm cupping his elbows. When his arms are locked out, I'm never gonna be able to get him down with my core. So I have to cup his elbows, not his gi material, guys. This is gi or no gi, I'm cupping his elbows. And once I pull him out and get that bend, then I can pull him in with my legs, okay? Now, if his hands drop to the mat, now I can attack the choke. So I'm always cross collar, guys. Everything I do in close, any guard is cross collar. I always want this. Uh, pop up real quick on your feet. Even if it's an open guard, I, this, I still want this. I always want this. And listen, this is good because it's a, it's a great means of control. I can control the distance to front and back, left to right. I can really get his, the, hit the front of his, his body weight. I can get it leaning forward, his head, so his hips start to get light. So that control is super important. So always, always, as soon as someone's in your guard and you have the opportunity, boom, here. And look, once you get this first grip behind the net, I don't just leave my hand there. I curl it here. I curl my fingers towards me so I can, I can kind of get this tension into his shoulder. And now I can begin to work his weight down here. Okay? So now his hands drop to the mat. If I have this, I already know I have the beginnings of a choke. This guy could be hanging out. He could be reaching behind me trying to open my guard. I'm going to slip underneath. Get equally, I change the angle to one side to shoot equally as deep. And now my head goes to my top hand, guys. And I'm finishing the choke right here. Boom. 70% of your effort, 100% of the time. If I had bad grips and I'm trying to squeeze it really bad, my hands are going to get tired. Right? He will tell you when the choke is on. The minute you, when you're really rolling and you start applying it and he starts defending, then you know you have it. And then you really want to apply. So right here when I'm fiddling for it, I'm like two thirds, two thirds, two thirds. When I feel him breathe harder or put his hands up, I know I have it. And then I lock it in and try to finish. So I don't really put a whole lot of effort to it until he tells me, okay, he, he's, he feels, he, he's nervous, so try to finish. Okay, so let's just work on breaking the posture, cupping the elbows, opening like a chicken wing, pull him in with your knees. Most of you guys have done this here. If you haven't, this is the easiest thing. We're not using our hands to bring him down. And over time, you won't even use cupping the elbows. You'll just put your hands behind your head, wait for that guy to open your guard, and then his head moves forward. You'll just bring him in with your knees and forward. And I can, look, if I try to dart across, he's gonna grab my hand, and now I'm stuck. And he can use this to set up his pass. So when he blocks on this side, bake loop, change the angle, look. I'm just grabbing, whatever. A lot of times, I, I don't, I just put my hand on his shoulder and duck my forearm underneath. Now for sure my head goes to my top hand and I'm pulling the bottom hand underneath until we get the tap, okay? If you uh, can grab, whisper in his ear. Whisper in his ear. <laughs> Sometimes guys, when he's defending, you can just get your thumb here, like Hodger from Mount. And if you can, you can loop it around, it's even tighter. But again, this one, if you're too close to this hand, it'll stuff it. You need to be a little further over, controlling the lapel. And sometimes you're in this dog fight down here and he can't even tell and you just grab a little piece and you just loop it around and finish. Boom, it's snakier, okay? So let's work on that second one. And then we'll start do this, what, do you, what will you feel like you do, right? But now with one hand, I'm gonna beat that one. They do this, they do this, right? So now he's gonna try to get grabby and all that. And the minute I feel him do this, just, there's two things that are gonna happen here. I look for him to ball up like this. And if he does, I'm not concerned about going over here, okay? All I'm gonna do is, boom, right on his forearm and elbow. Okay, boom, right there. And all I'm gonna do is this. Boom, down, same thing. Hmm. Push pull, just like push pull triangle, which some of you know. And now from here, I'm just swimming through to break the arm out. Again, everything's the whole same process we're looking to finish triangles. So again, that's why I always love this grip. Because I know he's gonna be trying to figure out how to open my guard, and as he's falling asleep, I'm slipping a choke in. And if he's defending, overly defending, I threw a few, then boom, I'm here, stuffing. Look, push him into your guard though. Change that angle. Make sure his elbow, it's not just enough to open around it, try to close around it. Once you're open, kind of slide him in there as you're doing the same thing. So half the distance to cover. And now from here, I still try to finish the choke to get this hand out. I'll still come here and try to finish. And as that hand starts coming out, 
then we'll quickly finish our trying. Okay? So, start making jujitsu work for us. Nice. Not the opposite. And this is what I mean when I talk about like the best defense is a consistent offense. This is where close guard. If you have enough, we're not just getting there, you know, to, to wrap our legs around. So when, I, when I'm attempting the choke and I, it's a ball, it's all balled up in here. I start this, and if he, a lot of times he'll follow it with this hand. If he starts following, trying to grab my hand, he's giving me the arm I want. Boom, boom. Okay, that's what I'm paying attention for. I don't just do this to do it. I do it to see what, how he reacts, right? So as soon as I get my hand on the collar, if his hands are behind him or on the mat, I'm gonna choke him. If, his hand, if he knows that, he comes up to defend, and he's tight, I'm gonna go here to try. If in the process he's trying to stuff the armor, he's try, I notice he keeps trying to grab my arm. And as I take it this way, he follows it, I'm blocking now. I gotta get up and block. Now a lot of times this may be hard, but as I go for the triangle, he feels me trying to come around this arm and change the angle, he's gonna rip it out of there. Okay, boom. So I'm gonna get one of the two. As soon as his arm starts following me, I know I either have an arm bar or a triangle. So I come here and he starts trying to grab, a lot of times they will, boom. Trap his arm, start trying to attack it. He pulls it out in the process of trying. He just gave me the triangle anyway, closing over the shoulder. Did you the arm bar one again? Yeah. I'm just here, I'm trying to go for the choke, but he keeps following me or even grabs. Boom, I'm just changing it, I'm trying to trap his arm here, okay? I can even switch, boom, and finish. But a lot of times it's, it's a weird, a fast transition, and I know that, and he gets the arm out. But even if he gets the arm out, it doesn't matter, he's right into the triangle. Death by a thousand cuts, right? He's gonna catch one of them. So, and, and again, the reason why I'm here flat on my back is at any point I miss any of it, right back to where I started. Start the whole process again. Okay, let's do it. Uh, Top guy follows you. I'm shooting for one of these triangles, especially if I try to stuff. He's gonna try to keep his hand, dart, dart his hand back in. He's gonna try to fight. As he's doing that, look, I'm not really fighting. I want him to bring his arm through. And as soon as he does, and it's straight, knees tight, right? He, see how he's trying to get, he, he exhaled a little heavy there? Because he's trying to get his shoulder through. He wants to get here. Once his arm gets through, he needs his shoulder to pop out. Now he's free. So in the process of letting, he's trying to fight his hand and posture up, I let that arm slide through, but not his shoulder. Because look, once the arm's straight, boom, I still have the arm bar. Okay? <laughs> you let him beat it through and then tight, and then boom, arm bar. Especially if you can get the other one under. Yeah. Like a lot of times these guys have him balled up and he'll push this one through on top, and now it's the fulcrum, boom, okay? So let's play with that. Yeah. The thing you're going for the X choke when you're looping above. Yep. And he chases you with the other hand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just a different series we've worked before. Yeah. <laughs> that was like, oh, what are, what are the options? They all tie together the shoulder again, and he's fighting to get his hand in, but maybe he knows I want this, we've done this before. I'm just gonna come through here and swim this way. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so many options. Okay. 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 Like, to oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's what I mean. Then I lock it up, okay? So control from here to here. No, it's a quick move, keeping his posture broken. Driving his head to the mat so the handoff is easier. Okay? Details. Details. The process. Close guard is not an easy thing to develop, but once you have it, first off, you have to commit yourself to going through it to develop an offensive guard. Once you have an offensive close guard, that's what you need to do. That's what guys can kill in your close guard. So, bye guys. Appreciate it.